Hello, everyone. Good evening. Hello. Okay. So, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. So, um, thank you today for coming to Youth Setters um, FB Live with regards to. Oopsies. Sorry about that. Okay. So, thank you so much for coming to today's um, discussion with regards to. Oops. Yeah, to the lockdown, unlocking the allegations with Dr. Kenneth Wong. So hi, good evening, Dr. Kenneth Wong Chenfei. Thank you so much for being with us today. And um, I would like to give you an introduction to your full history, please. Hi, good evening, everyone. Nice to meet you guys. Thank you for inviting me to share my experience uh, of how we uh, worked with the illegal immigrants, the parties. So basically, I'm a medical officer. Uh, from Hospital Selayang lah, and I served in Maib Sedang from end of May till June. That is around one month and one week. Yeah. Okay. So um, we do both know like um, with regards to what happened to Al Jazeera's documentary and how they actually uh, tried to showcase what happened with regards to the um, to the immigrants or to the illegal immigrants who had like the, uh, the COVID cases in here so please do tell us your uh, your experience in dealing with the lockdown at the immigrants area as a frontliner so as a frontliner um, i serve at maips lah. so maips uh, is a special place where the government built up uh, initially it was like a makeshift hospital where they come out with thousands of one about thousand beds to uh, hold and contain all the covid 19 patients lah. it's a quarantine center so um when I entered my apes, uh, it was around the end of May. Initially, it was uh, taking in locals in my apes. Mm -hmm. Then eventually, when the cases of uh, parties, lah, pendatang asing tanpa izin, the illegal immigrants, the number of COVID cases increasing in party numbers, then eventually my apes became parties only. So we have been taking about 700 to 800 uh, parties, and that is a very big number. Lah. So all these patients actually um, come to our center. We treat them for free. Uh, we provide them free food, three meals per day, good food. Then after that, we even provide them clothes. We provide them a proper ward um, with aircon, with proper toiletries. And also um, we treat them as normal human beings. Lah. Just like how we treat a local citizen, that's how we treat the parties. And in mites actually we actually um, help a lot of them by uh, treating what underlying condition they had so we actually did uh, many blood tests for them you know each patient that comes in we actually will take uh, bloods actually to check their full blood count we check their kidney we check their liver we check their infection cells in their body so we actually do a comprehensive uh, blood test for every party that is admitted Everyone that is admitted, we will check uh, freely for them, lah, which the cost is covered by the government of Malaysia. Okay. So are there any other, um, with regards to that, I'll have a follow-up. Um, with regards to that, do they need to present anything, the parties that we're talking about, do they need to present anything from their end? Or like, can anyone just come in or they, do they need any, um, let's say an advisory or a letter coming that I have, like, I have these symptoms and the doctor said, like, just go in here. Do, I, do they actually know what's, what was happening behind it? Um, most of them, they were told that they will be sent to a quarantine center where they come from, uh, from a depot or somewhere lah, where they come from. They are just sent to the center lah, for quarantine for 14 days to be taken care of. Lah. That's what I can say, yeah. Mm. Okay, okay. So uh, now that we know that this is actually what was happening, and um, th again, I would like to clarify, both the parties and the locals were treated in the center free of charge during the quarantine period. Yes, initially locals, then mm -hmm. after that mm -hmm. eventually it after became that, parties. Even yeah. became parties. Mm -hmm. okay. Then all three, yeah. okay. So oh, okay. Um, by the way, if you have any questions, please feel free to send us your comments down below. And um, we would um, as much as possible, we could we would love to answer it to the best of our abilities. Okay, moving on to our next question. Um, we do know that Al Jazeera produced a report with regards to what, what happened um, in Malaysia in regards to the quarantine for the Paddies. But how much is actually the truth behind this report? And do you think that there are actually other things that Malaysian government should have done differently? 
Okay, so we must understand um, that this video is actually, uh, from my own opinion, it is quite uh, one-sided. And it cannot be judged by me alone, but it should be judged by everyone else. Because I myself, I cannot say, I cannot condemn it or anything, you know. Mm -hmm. So what I can say is um, people were not, uh, Al Jazeera was not, were not happy with how uh, parties were treated. But what we must understand is, um, COVID-19 was very dynamic and ad hoc. Everything was done with speed and critical decisions were made by the health authorities. And no one can be 100% uh, prepared. Like what, like what you said, uh, um, I mean, no one, the government itself, so no one can be 100% prepared. So they did what the best they can do which is to, the main thing is to contain the spread of COVID-19. So no matter um, what was done, it was done to stop the spread, number one, stop the spread of COVID-19, and it was done according to the rule of law. And coinci co coincidentally, that when they um, check for COVID-19, most of the patients were parties, they were illegal immigrants. So and they were caught according to the rule of law, according to the Immigration Act. And um, after they were caught, eventually they were sent to the depots. So um, all I can say is what the health authorities did, they did their best lah in what they can do. Because if they did not take the strict measures, COVID-19 would have spread further and we wouldn't have achieved what Malaysia has achieved today that we have example today we have zero transmission of local cases for the second day in a row and this is a great achievement by our country so yeah they did what they can and what's best yeah that is actually quite true uh, given that we're in the leads right now or like we're one of the blueprints mm -hmm. for containing this uh this virus actually is quite a feat uh, given that we're like one of those, uh, we're one of the Southeast Asian countries who who had a huge hit at the at the first um first part of the first part of the year, right? Yeah. So given sorry, like again, sorry. oh sorry yeah, I just wanted to say how like we actually achieved like great feats for mm -hmm. basically containing sure. the virus. Given that we had like a huge setback, especially during the first start of the year, and mm -hmm. now that we're one of the, the leading countries in Asia for containing right. the virus is already quite a feat and um i think we should give the the government um some props basically for doing the best that they can to this uh pandemic that no one actually had any um any plans on how to treat it basically so um do you think that they should have done anything more different than that or do you think that they actually was they were able to contain it to the best of the, the best that they can different like i said differently it's hard mm -hmm. to say this is the first time yeah. covid 19 appeared and this yeah. is the first pandemic that i ever mm -hmm. served also i'm only like 28 years old and this is the first pandemic mm -hmm. i see unless there's a next pandemic probably will be more prepared but touch wood we don't want to see another pandemic or we don't want to see another outbreak but i believe we will be more prepared the next time if we have one and maybe if you have one next time, I don't know how old am I, will I be here also to be serving in the front lines? That is, oh yeah, that is true. Um, well, we do not hope that like, there's another one outbreak in, for this year, that would be too yeah, much. Right. Nobody yeah. knows. Yeah, no one can no expect, one right? you and I won't know. We won't know when there's a next outbreak, yeah. That is true. Um, but I would also like to know like the, the sentiments behind your other frontliners, the other frontline workers, um, how they experienced it uh, behind the scenes. Do you have any other um, stories for them that we could share to the public? So uh, you mean my other colleagues, you mean? Mm -hmm. my colleagues yes, from, yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, frontliners. So um, mm -hmm. it's actually a very good experience to be um, mm -hmm. working in MyIPS because it's a very special environment where we provide good care uh, and proper treatment for all the uh, parties are uh, illegal immigrants and most of the parties they did not scold us or look down on us or shout at us or make any problems we were nice to them and they were nice to us so when we actually go in you know with that full suit and everything you know you come in like an yeah. astronaut people feel scared when they yeah. see you but they actually when they see us they will actually like salam us like say hi 
and things like that, you know. And sometimes maybe they cannot say they are in their own language. They actually will show a sign language where they say hi or wave like that, smile, because they know that we want to help them. They know that we are not discriminating them or going to kill them inside or anything, you know. We are there to help them to um, recover from COVID-19. So all my colleagues actually had a good time, good experience uh, serving there. No issues. Given given the situation and you got you still had like a positive experience behind it, means yeah. like a lot, right? It reflects a lot. So um, that goes to show that there is actually two sides to every so story. And as um, as an informed citizen, like you know, it's our duty to basically know what was happening on both ends before we can make a conclusion and create such allegations behind it, right? Yeah. Yes. Um... We should be careful. People should be careful, like what they report or what they say, because there's always uh, the other side of the story, and they should hear from the other side, which is in this case the frontliners, lah. Many frontliners can tell you a lot of stories, a lot of details and stories of what happened and what we did to help the illegal immigrants. Not only the illegal immigrants, but also those immigrants that are legal and also the locals. Because when all this happened, it was so fast. The government um, was strict to everyone, locals, parties, and also parties. Pendatang asing dengan izin. No one, uh, they were strict to everyone because this is a pandemic. They had no choice. They had to be. Yeah, so everyone should um, hear, lah, hear from another frontliner. Okay. okay. So now we do actually have a question from uh, Harry's Asia ZD. JED, sorry about that. So, hi, Dr. Kenneth. Just curious, were there more than one detention camps where the alleged, uh, the alleged incidents could have happened? So, do you have any um, questions for that? Oh, answers for that, for that matter. Um, for this, uh, wait, let me see again the question. I'm uh, just curious whether there more than one detention yeah. camps where the alleged incidents yeah. could have happened. Um, I would not, I, I cannot be 100% sure on this, I can say. Mm -hmm. From what I know, there are a few detention centers, which is like the depots. The famous one is the three main depots, Bukit Jalil, Semenye, and KIA. But I cannot 100% say that uh, if any of those incidents happen in other, other detention centers. Yeah. Okay, okay. So you can only say what, what happened on your end. Okay. Mm. Yeah, correct. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. So now we'll, uh, we'll move on to our next question. But before that, again, again, uh, please feel free to drop uh, drop down any comments, any questions, or anything that you have in mind uh, with regards here. <laughs> with regards yeah, to this matter. Out. And yeah, and there's a shout out, by the way, from- uh, shout, out, shout out to my, shout out <laughs> to all uh, frontliners, especially. Uh, short one, uh, to all frontliners. Uh, again, thank you so involved. much. Yeah. Thank yeah, you so much, again, for yeah. the public. Yeah. Especially so to much. all- uh, frontliners who were in all the hospitals, the main hospitals like Sungai Bulo mm -hmm. Hospital and also all those who are working in MIPS, PKRC, MIPS, all the MO specialists uh, did a really good job because it, was, it wasn't easy to manage such a big group of mm -hmm. patients, you know. We had like massive admissions, like 200 people come overnight. Can you imagine 200 people? Handling one person wow. will give you a headache. But handling 200 people with just a limited number of uh, MOs, you know, a limited number of people, they have to work throughout the whole night when they come like in a big group. So it was really a good effort by many agencies la, that were yeah. involved. Mm. You think about it, 200 people, and we don't give them enough credit as much as, you know, as much as we could have had to. So then again, from everyone, uh, we are thank you, we're, we are thanking you for, for everything that you've done for everyone. For, for saving people's Thank lives. You. Yeah, Thank you so much for that. Mm. And now we're heading on to our next question. So why do you think they have come up with such a misleading report? Uh, referring back to the Al Jazeera uh, documentary, do you think, um, why is this issue being highlighted when Malaysia is doing well with the COVID-19 cases? Okay, so um, what I can say is, I do not know their main agenda Mm -hmm. because this report was only an opinion of one or two persons and those people are missing now where we need to find them we, if they are really standing for what they say they need to come out now and voice out but those people who were talking in the video are not out they are disappeared and we don't know where they are 
and what I can say, maybe a few people are not happy. Maybe uh, a few people are not happy where coincidentally many illegal immigrants are caught. But let's say, um, let's say, let's say, if you do not have a passport or any legal documents, and you find yourself in another country, in the neighboring country, um, what would happen? Will you not like find a way to get attention or maybe one sympathy? I'm not sure, but people would certainly do something. A certain, yeah. a certain few people will certainly say something. Yeah. But that I can true. say that, yeah, but I can say that the treatment that we give is quite good, I think, compared to uh, maybe other countries. Because, like, when you go to other countries, let's say you have an illegal immigrant without any passport, documents, or any letters, will you be given three meals a day and maybe a cup of Maggie and also a pot bottle of Jacker potato chips that, are, that is given to you, you know, and also a new toothbrush with toothpaste and also a new towel? Will you be given that if you are an illegal immigrant from somewhere or wherever? Will the government that uh, that you are in, whatever country where they give you that, that is something for us to ponder. Lah. That's something for everyone to ponder for Al Jazeera, for what they said. That is, yeah. that is true. And given that this is a pandemic and no one has planned for it, definitely it wouldn't it wouldn't be such a surprise if there's at least like a, a person or two who wouldn't be really happy or contented with what's happening um, on how like, you know, the government has handled it or like how the medical sector has handled it. So, in a way, like, again, this is for everyone that is listening and watching this um, live right now. It is our duty as citizens to basically be informed on what's happening on both sides of the area. It's good to know that there are actually, like, you know, there, there might be actually real incidents that happened and, you know, inequalities that have happened. But at the same time, we cannot discount the, the goodness that, the, the Malaysian government has done and also like what the medical sector has done for everyone. And basically now, um, basically Malaysia's cases right now is a is a beaming testimony as to how they actually, man they managed it quite well yeah. in comparison to, to the other countries, right? So True. and then, then again, they just, yeah. And then they just like spout it, you know, and then again, if you see that there's actually inequality happening, it is your duty as well to help out those who are in need and not just like say oh. it right right in front of the screen or like you know you just rant it out you need to tell them like you need to be taking action not just being informed mm -hmm. that is the that is how we should be and that's how we should do as you know as as a well-informed citizen so at, in the end the report the, they still mentioned like you know frontliners and, and doctors or and ngos are still helping the immigrants. Do you agree that they're still um, helping the immigrants um, along course. with the parties? Yeah. Of course, we should help the immigrants. Of course, mm -hmm. we should help all the parties. It is our duty as a frontliner and it's part of my job as a doctor, as service to the country. It is part of our Hippocratic, uh, Hippocratic oath that we have taken that we should do good and do no harm. And we will treat everyone no matter what race or religion they are. So that is, uh, the duty of all frontliners example not only doctors who have uh, sacrificed their time so many even the army the uh, angkatan tentera malaysia the police police diraja malaysia and uh, nurses uh, cleaners so many were involved you know in all this um, helping of the parties and also treating the helping in the covid-19 outbreak everyone actually did a great a uh, great part in helping yeah and they sacrificed their time and most of them actually spent until late nights. Imagine swabbing thousands of patients, you know, and it, was not, it wasn't It was easy. It wasn't easy to swab, you know. You have to put something in people's nose. Then people will sneeze at you. Then people will scold you after you put something in your nose. Yeah. <laughs> so it wasn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't easy to do that. Yeah. But uh, now can you take us to, like, what's happening right now in MAPS uh, or, in, uh, you know, in MAPS? And before that, before that, um, there's actually, like, a comment from Haley Wong that says like, thank you, Dr. Kenneth, for working tirelessly and sharing with us. How did you cope with those long working hours, especially as a frontliner, you didn't have any sleep, you didn't have any enough rest. So how were you able to cope up with this pandemic? Okay, so we actually work um, in shifts, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. and 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. Basically, it's a 12 hour shift for us, mm -hmm. for all the medical officers. So it was okay. Um, we took turns in whatever we did, 
for example, we let's say half of the people would actually wear the full suit and half of the people would do the report. So it was a shared workload between the medical officers and the specialists also were kind. All the physicians there, you know, we have physicians from all over uh, Malaysia coming together in this uh, center to help to serve in this uh, COVID-19 outbreak. So um, they help make the job easier for us. Lah. And also very important is the cooperation of the parties. They cooperated with us. They were very nice to us in the in the center. And so we were nice to them, YC Versa, as normal human beings. That is that is actually that is actually something that you know people wouldn't see behind the scenes. And the 12 hour shifts are just quite tiring. You just imagine. And you guys are actually not having any rest because like if you're not doing your job as like a frontliner, you're doing the report as well. So that is just like something that we need to, you know, like we appreciate it even more and more as we hear these stories from other people, right? From, from especially from you, Dr. Kenneth. And that's just like something we, we should thank you for every single time. Um, Thanks just to have, everyone. Like, Thanks to all. Thank Thanks you. To thank all you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone did a big part, like, not only me. Yeah, I just shared a bit, a small opinion of what I had. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, okay. So do you have um, like any last words for like people who are like listening and watching this show and you know, like any any uh, closing remarks for them? COVID-19 is not over yet. If you look in other countries, the cases are rising thousands by the day. If you read the news, uh, if you read the news, other countries, I don't, know, I don't want to mention their names, but you read thousands by the day. So it's not over yet. It's still in our community. So we have to be careful and be ready for what comes. We do not know what will happen. So we must always practice, uh, like what they said, social distancing. Don't stay too close to someone. Don't hug someone. We should wear a mask wherever we go. Um, wherever we go, la. I mean, we don't know who is sick, right? Someone might spread the virus to us and we should always wash our hands because washing the hands are most is the most important thing that we can do uh, to stop the spread of COVID-19. Yeah. Mm. Um, before before we close down, we I actually do have a question again with regards to that. Do you actually, um, as a medical practitioner, do you recommend that people should start going out right now? Because like it's RMCO, and I think everyone just had like um, just had that hit that everyone just like go out because they can. So do you have any um, reservations for that matter? Like do you, you think know the still stay home? The the cinemas are open already, right? So everyone's yeah, going they did, there, they did. and things like that. Yeah, yeah. You think it's safe enough? Um, uh, we cannot hundred percent say it's hundred percent safe mm -hmm. enough because you won't know who has COVID nineteen. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. in the in the statistics in Malaysia, almost 70, 70 to eighty percent of the patients were asymptomatic. asymptomatic. Basically, they had no symptoms. They are like you and me, laughing, joking, but they are COVID positive. So we must still be careful to. Uh, try to avoid all these crowded areas la, until a certain period of time. Not sure when, but a certain period of time, la, we should be careful. Yeah, and try not try try to avoid crowded areas still. Yeah, still, still. If you yeah. guys are still follow the, I rules, mean, uh, follow the rules, follow the rules, please. Wear your mask. Bring uh, stay like you know your hygiene. Keep keep it clean. Bring a sanitizer and practice. And maintain social distancing and as much yeah. as possible like you can still like you know hold like only small gatherings because it's, at the end of the day um these ru these rules and these guidelines are, aren't here just to like you know just to uh piss us off or just like for nothing it's here to take care of us and for, to keep us safe always yes True. yeah True. And actually, Kanmani Aiba is also agreeing with, with, um, with our statement. So please and please wash hands after touching any surfaces. And always keep track like with the, um, with the, um, with the QR services and like the Mycelagor ones. Um, please, please try to keep a, track, keep a track of where you go because that will help in containing the diseases as well. And also, Brian Lim is agreeing with us in learning how to live with the new norm. Do you think it's the new norm, doctor? <laughs> like this, yes. um, the situation that we're currently in. Um, do you very, think that, sorry? 
sorry, sorry, you can continue your question. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's more of like, um, do, do you agree with the statement? Like, um, of is it course, the new norm? it's totally a new norm because previously we don't even need to be one meter distance. You know, you can be sitting at the mama store next to your friend, but now a table only can sit like two person or three person. You know, you cannot sit with your best friend. Your best friend has to sit at another table. You cannot um line up. You know, you have to have a big gap. Then you have to do that. You know. And people will find it like, you know, we have to fill in the box every time. You have to scan the QR code. We don't do all this previously, but now we have to do all of it, you know. The reason why they, they make you like copy everything, you know, and write the write the scanning the codes is actually for contact tracing. In case if there's a spike in cases, outbreak, or yeah. there's an outbreak, we can trace who a day, you know, and we can find, find out and detect the cases and we can stop it soon as fast as possible. That's the main reason that's why they are doing it. But we have to, what? No choice? We, yeah. yeah. We have to, and it's also for us. Um, it's a minor inconvenience, basically, for, for keeping us safe. And it's a huge help for the frontliners and for the statisticians who will be taking care of the outbreak in case, you know, um, God forbid this happens again. So then again, uh, we are leaving the last minute for questions or any last words, any suggestions for everyone. So Dr. Kenneth Wong, do you still, uh, Hazim Hussain has said, apaka memory terinda andani, T Myers. Oh, basically, he's asking me what's the best, what's the best. Best memories uh, in my ips, yes, sir. Best memory in my ips, lah. Best memories in my um, ips, yes, sir. Getting awesome colleagues to work with. Yeah, mm -hmm. maybe I can say that, lah. Yeah, and also, it's a good uh, new experience uh, to handle a pandemic because when the pandemic doesn't come often, you don't see it um, every one year or maybe, I don't know, but it certainly came this year. I mean, it certainly came in 2019. But working with good colleagues lah, because we get to meet uh, doctors from every uh, hospital in Selangor. Because there were doctors from uh, Ampang, Sedang, Selayang Hospital. There were doctors from HKL Hospital Kuala Lumpur. There were doctors from PPUM. There were doctors from all over Malaysia. Even some some from Ipoh Hospital Bahagia, and even. We meet people from outside, even private uh, GPs. I know a few private GPs, general practitioners, like mm -hmm. a few of them, like Dr. Sasi, Dr. Rafi, or Dr. Bibiana. They actually um, stop their work outside and spend their time to serve in the government again. They came back again to serve the government to, to help in the outbreak. So this is actually a very good uh, initiative by them. The, especially the private GPs uh, and through this we get to meet many new friends yeah to survive this together to say that we can we are still alive at the end of the day we are still alive yeah okay okay um so we have another question from Harry's age uh, JD doc any idea why Al Jazeera would want to publish such allegations which we have covered um earlier ago but please reiterate again any, any with us? Sorry, yeah, the thing is lagging yeah. a bit. Oh, that's the question again. Um, the are there like, um, do you have, do you have any idea as to why Al Jazeera would publish such allegations behind what's happening right now? I'm not hundred percent. I can say again, I'm not hundred percent sure mm -hmm. why they want to publish this, but probably they wanted to find an interesting story to talk about, and they found one or two persons willing to talk. Uh, yeah. to share about this and those one or two persons again I said are not here anymore we cannot find them and if they want to stand out for their truth that one or two persons should come out now come out to the authorities and speak for themselves and speak out the truth if they want but we do not see them so we cannot we cannot 100% say what they, they are saying is true because they might be emotional at a certain time maybe because they are illegals or anything I'm not sure but um, that's what I can say, yeah. Okay, so we have another question from Mariam Sakinaya Abdullah. Doctor, thank you so much. I have one question. What do you think about other people's opinion saying that we should not use our taxpayers' money for parties? The taxpayer money for parties. Um, what I can say is the government actually is uh, helping, helping a lot uh, in this pandemic and they didn't mind using the taxpayers money because this was to stop the spread of COVID-19. So it was actually a very good initiative by the government for not being calculative. The government mm -hmm. was not calculative uh, with how much was spent. And if you actually count how much was spent, 
you'll be surprised. Like for example, one swap is probably two, three hundred ringgit. Then some of them will take two swaps that equals to 400, 500 ringgit. Then three meals per day, one meal, you can count how much. Then they stay inside for 14 days. So 14 times three is equals to 50 over meals. Then all this is actually fully sponsored by taxpayers. And um, and they actually, sorry, all these were actually sponsored by taxpayers. So mm -hmm. um, the government was not calculative. Lah. That's what I can say. They did yeah. their best for they what best. They did for the country. Yeah. And basically, they did that to to stop the, to stop the virus, and it's for also for the for the taxpayers as well. Oh, <laughs> okay. So someone's just asking if you're still single, doctor. <laughs> no, okay. I'm not single. I'm not single. Yeah. I'm yeah. not single. <laughs> that is a private question. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> okay. Then again, thank you so much, Doctor Kenneth. You can message me in uh, Facebook. We, Oh wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So doctor, again and again, thank you so much for being with us today with uh, Youth Southern Malaysia for taking your time with us, um, answering these questions and basically clarifying everything that what was happening behind my apps and like the parties and the Al Jazeera report. Mm -hmm. and so one more thing then I it, to highlight. Yeah, there's mm -hmm. one thing I want to highlight. Yeah. And one thing we must really appreciate it is the um Angkatan Tentera Malaysia, the ATMs, because they actually mm -hmm. have people who they actually uh, came out in full force, not only the doctors from KKM, the Ministry of Health, mm -hmm. but the Angkatan Tentera Malaysia, because they came out in full force and they had many different departments that came out. They had people who were guarding the places, who set up all the enhanced MTO areas. It wasn't easy. It's not easy to set up that, you know, the whole areas with the barb areas and everything. It wasn't easy. And they also sent uh, many army doctors to serve in the uh, quarantine center, especially Maips. And it was great to meet uh, a big number of them there uh, serving our country. Yeah. Okay. So then again, like, you know, everyone was cooperating and everyone was like joining forces in stopping the spread of this disease. And lastly, Abigail Lin has said, well said, my son, we're proud of you. Miss you at yes, home. Mama. Oh, doctor. <laughs> doctor, <laughs> mom misses you so much. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, then again, thank you so much for being with us today. And thank you so much, viewers, oh. for being with us and taking your time with us for our Facebook Live today. We are wishing you a very, very safe and wonderful night and wonderful day. Thank you very much. Thank you again. Stay thank you everyone. so much. Stay safe. Thank okay? you so Stay much. Safe. Say, say. Bye. Bye. Bye.